So we're back on to uh, question number two, and uh, I just want to pick up. There's a couple of unique things that happen on this one, a little bit different than the first one uh, that I just want to go through. So one of the things I marked off on the paper here, you can see there, I, you always should check at the beginning to see if every power term is listed in case you're going to be using synthetic division. So fourth degree, third degree, no second degree, but a first degree and zero degree. So we have to include a placeholder for a coefficient of zero for that second degree power term. So now we go back to this, we see it's, it's not really factorable. Um, you can take out a common X cubed, you'd be left with an X minus three. But if you take out a common factor of four here, you're left with three X minus four. That's not the same factor. So that's not gonna work by grouping. So we're gonna have to find another means to do this. And that other means is going to be, again, using the calculator to help us uh, solve by factoring. All right, so I have the equation thrown in here. It's in the uh, second y2. The first one was the first example we did. So it's right here highlighted. So if we look at the graph here and we see the picture, there's our zoom standard window. It definitely looks like it crosses a rational root here somewhere about negative one. And then at one, two, three, four, it looks like positive four. So if we double check that and verify it on the table of values, sure enough, we see at negative one, whoops, at negative one right here, there's a root since the output is zero. And then again, at positive four, there's also another root. So those are our two rational roots that we're going to be able to then synthetically divide out negative one and positive four, similar to the first example. So if we take out, we know x equals negative one is a root. So if we use negative one synthetically and we write out our synthetic division process, right, um, what we'll have here is coefficients of one negative 3, 0, negative 12, and negative 16. So edge straight down, multiply diagonally, edge straight down and multiply diagonally, edge straight down, multiply diagonally, edge straight down and multiply diagonally. And sure enough, we get what we expected. We got a remainder of 0, so therefore that was a root if that's what we were expecting. We can take this now, which is a third degree. So we went from a fourth degree, this is now a third degree, x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x minus 16. And we can use that with our another uh, rational root. So we know that there's another rational root at x equals 4. So I'm just going to take these same coefficients. I don't even have to write out the equation again because I know they're going to be the coefficients. 1, negative 4, 4, and negative 16. And I'm going to synthetically divide out the other rational root of x equals 4. So we add straight down, multiply diagonally, add straight down, multiply diagonally, and, uh, oops, sorry, uh, that's a zero, add straight down and multiply diagonally, and we get, again, a remainder of zero. It's what we expected. Now we're down to a second degree polynomial. This is our 1x squared term plus 0x and then plus 4. So that is what we're left with trying to solve. We want to set that equal to zero and solve that out. So what are some methods we could use for this? Well, you could definitely use a quadratic formula if you wanted. Be careful. It's not x squared minus 4. That would be a difference of two squares. This is not. This is a sum. So that doesn't work for dots. Uh, so we could use quadratic formula. Uh, use these coefficients for a, b, and c. That would be the same thing here. But if you just set this equal to zero, x squared plus four equals zero, it's actually easier to just solve using square roots. x squared equals negative four, and then we can take the square root of both sides. And again, that's a plus minus right there. So we get x equals plus and minus the square root of negative four, which is just two i. So those are our other two roots. So here we have two imaginary roots. We get plus and minus 2i. And then above, we have our two rational roots, two rational roots. And those are the ones that we use the graphs on right there. Okay, so total of four roots, which we expected since it was a fourth degree up there. Okay, and so we get x equals negative 1, positive 4, and plus and minus 2i. Combination of two rational roots and two imaginary roots. All right. Uh, so using those two uh, examples, maybe you could try completing the uh, back page of this worksheet. And then uh, I'll have the answer key posted as well for today. Good luck, guys.